Hi everybody, and welcome to Lecture 10 of Digital VLSI Design. I'm Dr. Adam Thiemann of Bar-Ilan University. Today I'll be discussing input-output circuits and the pad ring. So let's start actually with a bit about packaging. How do we actually get outside the chip? Well, it's a pretty long road. We have I.O. circuits on the chip that go into bonding wires that then go into the package and finally make it to the board and that's what gets us outside the chip. And once we get outside the chip, we have long wires. Long wires mean a lot of delay, a lot of capacitance, and a lot of inductance. It's a different order of magnitude than what we're used to from inside the chips. Um, one thing, we can use fatter wires and that way get low resistance, and we have a lot more room to play around with than we do inside the tight chip. The interface between the chip and the outer world is the IC package, which we can see here, where we have our piece of silicon over here and all the connection to some sort of a substrate, which is this uh, type of green piece here, this type of small board. Um, we have these bond wires, for example. We have the bonding pad, and we probably have some sort of a mold that keeps everything in place. So... What is this package? It sounds like kind of a trivial type of a thing, but actually it's very important and, and it may be, in fact, one of the most expensive pieces of the whole uh, product in the end. So the package provides the physical temperature and electrical protection for the chip. Um, it's the electrical connection from the chip to the board. So we need to go from the chip and arrive to the rest of the system through this package. It's the physical connection, it actually what connects it physically, and it protects us from high voltages that are outside the chip. It gives us physical protection so we don't accidentally break the chip if we touch it or something like that. And it provides um, thermo isolation, which is a very important piece that we'll discuss. Um, here we can have a type of a schematic of a package with all kinds of pieces of RLC that we have um, connecting to it. The requirements of the, the package have five different categories. First of all, electrical, we need to discuss the capacitance, resistance, inductance, and impedance tuning of all the connections to the chip. We have the interface, so we want a large number of I.O. pins often to connect to different uh, interfaces outside the chip. We have the mechanical um, type of a requirement, which is what type of protection we have for both the die itself and the bonds that connect the die to the outside world, and how it is compatible with the underlying um, PCB that we have to connect to. We have the thermal requirements, which are how do we remove heat from the chip. That's a very important part. And we have the cost. Again, the the um, cost of a system is going to be very dependent on the package. The package is a very uh, su substantial figure in that, and we want it to be as low as possible. Um, it, it, giving good thermal protection will let us deal without a fan or a heat sink or so forth, and that can also um, lower the overall cost of our system. So we're going to start to discuss how the package itself connects to the board. This is already outside the chip, but it's an important part of this whole discussion. So the original type of a uh, package that was used, and it's the cheapest type of package you can get, is called the DIP, the dual inline package, and variations on it. Each type of these packages that I'm going to show, there are dozens, maybe more standards that you can buy that are similar to it. And this, as you can see, has two rows of these types of pins. Um, they often call this uh, in Hebrew a juke, which means like a bug because it kind of looks like a little um, cockroach or something, this type of a package. And these little um, pins, they stick into holes in the board. And then you put some solder on the back of them and that's it, how it connects to the board and holds it in. But as you can see, this type of a package has only uh, a relatively low number of pins. It's also a, a, a kind of a, a rectangular shape rather than something square, which may be more um, useful. And um, this type of a package only had 16 pins, so you could only make 16 connections outside the chip. And therefore, it's, uh, it's very limited in its, uh, in its I.O. bandwidth. Um, a more kind of a complex package is the what we would call a QFP or a quad flat package and it's a type of families. And here we have a, a already a square uh, package with uh, many of these types of pins. The pins are also sort of bent so it's easier to uh, put the solder on them and so forth. Um, as you can see the difference would be that in here you would have a chip like this that would be connected 
to uh, these guys in such a way and on the other side too and here you would have the chip in the middle here that's connected now to all of these guys and we have a lot more pins in this case but still we have to in the end solder each one of these pins separately to the board and uh, which could take quite a bit of work and uh, it has these long um, connections that have to be bonded inside which we'll discuss in a minute. Um, a, a more uh, um, kind of complex package is what we call a PGA or a pin grid array and here on the board we would have holes in an array so if we would take our board it would have a bunch of these holes in it and we can just stick the uh, this flip this package over and stick it in and all the pins will stick right into where we um, we pre-drilled these pins and then we have to just put solder on the other side um, inside here of course we have the chip which is now uh, routed to all of these pins and we can get a lot more pins in this way um, uh, so this is a bit better uh, arrangement and finally we have what we call a BGA or a ball grid array which is similar in how it's set up to this PGA but here instead of these holes on the board what we would have is we would have kind of uh, landing pads on the board, these types of places, that we just flip this thing over, put it on, and there's uh, some material here that once we heat up the, the board in the package, we uh, these balls will melt and they will cause this connection to happen. So we don't have to go and solder each one of these, but rather we can um, just do one type of a thermal uh, process that will connect everything at once and that's much more um, efficient than, than doing it one by one. So a ball grid array is what's used for things with a lot of pins and uh, that we want to do it more uh, effectively but of course the price goes like this right so these will be a lot more expensive. But that's outside the chip so that's how the chip the, the, the package itself connects to the board. We also have to look how the package connects to the chip. And so uh, there are two main approaches to this. The traditional one um, is called wire bonding. This is what was done for many, many years, and it's still done with the uh, cheaper chips that don't need as special um, uh, requirements. But what we have here basically is that we take the die, we put it on some sort of a uh, solder or something here, uh, that it can be held on to and then we will um, put a little uh, we will put a solder here we will solder a piece of usually gold then tie this gold over to the connection that uh, that pin that we saw before like uh, on our QFP um, and we'll put another solder over here so if we look at this in a microscope we can see here that there's a piece of solder over here and on the other side as well uh, over there there will be another piece of solder and this is really a very thin gold wire um, that, that, that makes the connection um, all the pins have to be around the chip edges which uh, we have about a hundred micron pitch it can be lower than that but it's on the uh, order of magnitude of uh, dozens maybe a hundred micron um, we have to bond each one of these chips we have this sewing machine kind of thing that goes and it bonds this side then bonds this side then on the next pin bonds the two sides so this happens really fast but it still happens one by one and uh, there's the machine has to do this um, and in the, the the result is that we have this long wire and if you see this the wire is long means it has a high RLC so it's about five nano hen Henry's and one picofarad per wire which is quite a bit um, outside the chip so that's a uh, wire bonding it's the cheap way of doing it it's what's usually done but again it takes a lot of time and it, it turns out that we have large parasitics on the wires the other option is to use what we call a flip chip and it's called a flip chip because what we do is we take the chip and put on the top of it um, these things called solder bumps and then we flip the chip over we turn it over like this and put it on the substrate um, and then we just heat up the substrate and uh, the, the solder bumps will be connected. So in that way, it's just like a BGA. The only difference is that now the solder bumps are on the uh, chip itself. So this is the, the IC and um, the, uh, the array here of uh, these package pads, they're on the package itself. 
okay um, underneath this there will be routing usually to other balls that will uh, have solder bumps under here that will connect to the board to the PCB so this this thing is the substrate of the package this is the substrate of the package and um, and this is the IC itself okay um, so um, what's good about that so first of all we can have our actual connections these balls they connect to the actual metal inside our chip uh, to our back end our high uh, metals of our back end uh, uh, process and so they're direct connections that, that enable us to connect to the middle of the chip here on, uh, with the with the bond pads with the wire bonding we could only connect to the the edges so if the bond pads, all of the bumps were around the chip and they had to connect outside here with the flip chip, we can actually stick these bonds right in the middle. And that's really good. Why is it good? It's good for several reasons, but it, we can have signals come in directly into the middle of the chip, but even better yet, we can put connections to power and ground wherever we want inside the chip and we don't have to have the long route from like for instance if we had here we uh, put in some sort of a uh, VDD it would have to route all the way to here to get the VDD to a transistor that would be in the middle of the chip here we can put the the, the VDD right on top of it um, the other thing is we don't have these long wires right and so we get these short uh, wires these they're just these bumps and uh, we get uh, a much, much lower um, uh, inductance. So it's like 0.1 nano Henry. Um, another thing is it's really quick, right? We just take the chip, put it on top of the substrate, heat it up, and everything is connected rather than connecting all these pins at once. Um, another thing is that I, I just didn't mention a second ago is that beforehand we had everything around the edges that means that we could only use the periphery of the chip to make these bonds and we had our our pitch which i said was a few do a dozen microns even up to 100 microns pitch between them here we can put these all over the place so we use the whole area of the chip we can get many 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 more pins versus uh, the wire bonding process okay this is all great but it's really expensive um, it costs much more to both plan these uh, chips and to um, pack and, and to buy the package itself okay so just when you take a wire bond which is something that we often do in academia because uh, the the flip chips are so much more expensive to to ramp up and to make um, we're going to do a lot of wire bonding and that's also true for maybe a, a lot of embedded products that that don't have as high uh, bandwidth needs and can deal with a smaller number of uh, peripherals. So what we have to make sure is, remember we have these pads around the chip, these IOs, which we'll be discussing in a minute, and they have these bonds that connect to the, uh, the connections that are on the inside of the package. And these become these long wires, they have some sort of an angle, and we have to make sure that none of the wires cross, like if I wanted to take this, uh, if I wanted to take this guy over to here and take this guy over to here, we would have crossing wires. And uh, as whoever's seen Ghostbusters know, you're not allowed to cross the streams. Okay, we have to have some sort of minimum spacing in this way. And of course, uh, between these guys too. And we can't have uh, too big an angle of wires. So if our bond was here, we probably couldn't take it to the corner over here because the angle becomes too big. And we also get too long a wire there. Um, for example, if we make a chip that's really small and we have this long wire, it also may not meet the DRC rules of the package. So these are all um, some of the requirements of bond, bond wires. Just I want to make a short summary here because often uh, I find out that so, sometimes we lose things in the context. So um, remember, we have our IC, which is our little chip. And around the chip, we're going to put, and I'll discuss in a minute, these um, bond pads which are pieces of metal but they're in in the back end uh, of the chip so these are like a top metal layer um, that that is open it's uh, not covered by some sort of a uh, passivation that blocks the, the outside world then we come and we take a package substrate so that's a some sort of a piece of plastic or something that uh, we put the chip on we'll usually glue it onto that and um, that has its own types of these uh, landings around um, on the inside part of on the interior part of it okay all of these landings around will be each connected to a little pin 
right? The, as we saw before, that goes out to the board itself. So what we need to do now is we need to connect the chip to the package. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna take a piece of gold, we're gonna solder it over here and pull it over to here and solder it over here. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and same we're gonna do for each and every one of these. That's the wire bonding process. Now we're gonna take this package, okay? We're gonna also uh, put some mold on top of it so everything will be held in place. These very thin wires won't ever move and so forth. It'll be protected from our fingers. There'll be a top on the package which will uh, be some sort of a heat sink and be able to dissipate um, uh, dissipate heat and so forth. So this we're going to all put onto our board. This is our big PCB. Okay. This thing we'll usually call the substrate of the package. Okay. And this guy will be the IC. Okay. So now we have our big PCB, which may have other chips on it and who knows what. Um, and these guys, we're going to actually solder all of these pins in either again if it was like a qfp package we'd uh, make a solder on it if it was like a dip package we'd have a hole that this thing would fit through um if it was a uh a, a, a grid array then uh it could be a hole ones with the holes or the ones with the landing um with heating it up if it was a bga or a pga um and then these guys are going to be routed on the board to other places that they need to go Okay, um, those routes will be already built into the, the PCB. So um, we discussed these two types of connections, the connections from the chip to the package substrate and from the substrate to the board. I just wanna also mention that these package substrates are pretty much standardized. So other than the flip chips, which will be made per product, there are different, uh, you can go online and buy a, a number of thousand of these packages that they'll already be set to a certain size and so forth and then uh, the bonding houses will figure out how to um, make the connections from the chip to these packages that already exist so that was just a summary of our first part about packaging